He's good about doing that, is he not? Uh, making a trial a blessing. Many times we don't think about it that way, uh, but the Lord, he does. He's so good at allowing difficulties to turn into blessings in life. Amen? And uh, I'm grateful that he does that. And we know all things work together for the good of them that love God, of those called according to his purpose. Amen? Mark chapter 15, if you have your Bible, I want to, we looked there last week, and I want to go back there just for a few moments today. Mark chapter 15, and uh, I hope you've had a wonderful day so far. Amen. Uh, we were able to make a memory with our grandson yesterday. Took him fishing just for a little bit, and the Lord blessed, and uh, had a wonderful time there. Amen. And I hope you had a wonderful day yesterday, and I hope you have a wonderful Lord's Day today. And uh, those that are watching on Facebook, we'd like to welcome them. And uh, don't forget tonight, we'll be back here in prayer and be back in the life of David. And I hope the Lord is blessing your life this morning. Amen. Mark chapter 15. Mark chapter 15 and verse 15. <clears throat> well, let's look in verse uh, 14. Mark chapter 15 and verse 14. Then said Pilate unto them, Why? What evil hath he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, Crucify him. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him. Thank you this day for the word of God. Thank you for the blessing of uh, thy word and how that Lord, without it, uh, we would be in such a horrible situation. But because of thy word, heaven and earth uh, uh, may endure, but thy word shall endure. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but thy word shall endure forever. Thank you for the word of God, Lord, this morning. I ask now that you would help us as we uh, look into it. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would take us uh, into the Bible, into the reality of the life of the Lord Jesus. And help us, Lord, see the unsearchable riches of Christ. Thank you for the songs that have been sung. Thank you for the faithfulness of your people, Lord. Uh, today's another day, and here we are again in need. We're in need of uh, not only financial and material things, Lord, and physical things, but Above all, we need your blessing on our life. We, we need to sense the presence of Almighty God. Help us, Lord. We'll love you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to notice that Pilate, in this situation, uh, there's an uproar amongst the people. The Lord has been placed on trial. And notice with me, if you would, uh, verse 1. And straightway in the morning... The chief priests held a consolation with the elders and scribes and the whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him unto Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answering said unto him, Thou sayest it. In other words, yeah, you, 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 I'm the king of the Jews. And the chief priest accused him of many things. But he answered nothing, and Pilate asked him again, saying, Answerest thou nothing? Behold, how many things they witness against thee. But Jesus answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. Now at the feast he released unto them one prisoner, whosoever they desired. And there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them, that had made insurrection with them, who had committed murder in the insurrection. And the multitude crying aloud began to desire him to do as he had, even, uh, had ever done unto them. In other words, release one on that day. But Pilate answered them, saying, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priest had delivered him for envy. But the chief priest moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. 
And Pilate answered and said again unto them, What will ye that I shall do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? And they cried again, Crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, Why? Why? What evil hath he done? And they cried the more exceedingly, Crucify him. And Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. I want you to notice Pilate comes out and God is going to use this government official to pronounce the innocence of Jesus. They're crying to crucify the king of glory and God has so grabbed the heart of the one in leadership, he is going through Pilate to pronounce the innocent of the Lord Jesus. And God in his word says a few things about the king. He said, truly the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord and he turneth it whithersoever he will. Let me say this, uh, Pilate knew the truth. And here's a place, whether you agree or disagree with Pilate, that you've got to respect. This crowd is hungry for blood. Someone wants to be punished. The public is, is uh, wanting major condemnation to come upon people, uh, to come upon someone. And Pilate stops and he just asks the question, why? What has he done? And he gives this crowd an opportunity to respond with the crimes that Jesus had committed. He says, why? What has he done? Why should he be crucified? And not one person answers Pilate with an accusation. And later on in the Word of God, in another place, it talks about an accusation against him. Pilate here is going to pronounce the Lord innocent. And before he ever allows anything else to transfer. Uh, transfer. And what you see is this. You see the sin and the will of the public wants to crucify and condemn the Son of God. Now look, that ought not surprise you and I. Uh, today, uh, we've got a movement, friend. Now I'm all for anyone that truly does get saved. I want you to, anyone, there are people in Hollywood that do get saved. Uh, so I don't want to belittle uh, their salvation experience. Uh, I've recently uh, come across a few testimonies, and I believe that they really did get saved. Amen? Uh, but they're, uh, and I'm trying to think of the one fellow's name. Maybe it'll hit me before, but I listened to his testimony the other day, and he talked much about repentance. Now, when someone in Hollywood even mentions repentance, uh, that's an eye-opener to me, amen, that they have really listened to the Word of God. We've got to be careful about who we think can be saved and who can't be saved. God can save any individual at any time. But the public wants to condemn Christ here. They're wanting to, uh, if you will, not only find him guilty and let a murderer go, but they want some punishment. They want sin to be punished. And they don't want nothing to do with the innocence of Christ. Let me say that ought not surprise us. Because now we live in a day and time where everything is accepted. I mean, you can be transgender, trans, uh, anything. Amen. One guy told me the other day, trans, I heard trans disabled. Somebody wanted to be disabled, so they just cut one of their hands off and said, I'm a disabled. I mean, we got all kind of stuff going on in America, uh, and you can do and condemn anything, but when you stand up for Christ and you begin to proclaim the innocence of Christ and you talk about the pureness of the Son of God and His, and His life and how that He lived 33 years and never sinned and Christ never once thought a bad thought. He never once did sin. And you stand up and begin to announce the innocency of Almighty God, the Lord, and how 
how he lived a perfect, innocent life here at, oh, before Calvary. I'm telling you, they don't want to hear it. You can talk about, I saw some of the most perverted stuff that, that is in our school system just last week. Uh, and, and it's openly accepted into the school system. Teaching homosexual, homosexuality is still a sin. It's wicked. Romans chapter 1, it's a, it, it nauseates the stomach of God. God condemned it. And if you die without Christ, God loves the homosexual. Let me say that. He hates the sin. The sin is wicked. But the person and the soul of that person is precious to Almighty God. But God still condemns that wicked sin. And our children, they don't have no place in the school systems. Amen or oh me. We ought to condemn it. But I'll tell you what they will throw out of the school. They'll publicly condemn the Lord Jesus. Pilate is saying, why should I punish him? And they're saying, crucify him. And they publicly condemn him. You'll tell you why. They don't want to accept the righteousness of God's Son and the reality that he'll come back one day. The reality that he died at Calvary and he rose again. You can teach them anything, but don't you teach them that. Why? We're living in a wicked society, friend. We're living in a world and we're outnumbered. Thank God we're just pilgrims passing through. One of these days the rapture is going to take place and you and I are going to be gone. But they publicly condemned the Lord back then. They were ready to crucify him. And here is a man that's in a high position, looks out, and God sovereignly, if you will, pronounces the innocence of Christ he says, why? What has he done? He hadn't done nothing. Now, why did Pilate say that? Well, Barabbas, through the insurrection, had, there was a murder committed. And Barabbas was guilty. And what Pilate is trying to do, he realizes the wicked, evil intentions of those that are in leadership in Jerusalem and their wicked intentions are to take an innocent, that which is healthy for society, that which is good for society, and do away with it. And they want to continue their wicked ways. And Pilate says, why? What has he done? What has he done? Why is society in this world so willing and so fastly want to do away with God's Son? Have you ever noticed it? You can talk about a lot of things. I mean, there's so many things that you could go into a public school and talk about. But to talk about the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, and to talk about the second coming of Christ, and the premillennial reign of Christ, it's going to happen. You get to talking about that, and they'll condemn it in a second. Well, let me tell you something. That very spirit is the evidence and the overwhelming proof that he is coming back. Why hate something if it ain't real? Why hate something if it's not coming, if it's not going to become true? Why condemn something if it's not going to come true? That ought to encourage you, child of God. We're in a crowd, that, we're in a minority, if you will, but there's coming a day and a time that Jesus is coming back and they will every, every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There'll be no why, what has he done? but they'll be what he has done. He was pronounced innocent by Pilate, but condemned by the public. May I give you some advice and some food for thought? It's not going to get any better. That is correct. It's going to get worse. The love of many will wax cold. And we better do what we can do while we have the time to do it. Time is like a vapor. It's running out. We don't have time to be wasting no time in this pulpit or in this church. We've got to encourage people to get right with God right now. They quickly condemned the Lord. Let me say this. 
We ought to be commending the things of God. We ought to be encouraging people to do the things of the Lord. But here, this public, notice what they did. Overwhelmingly, look what it said here in verse 14. Then Pilate said unto them, Why, what evil has he done? Uh, they cried out more exceedingly, Crucify him. We want nothing to do with him. Oh, me. I'm telling you right now, and I don't want to be hard on politicians. I've about had all the politicians I want. And I'll be honest, I've had all the news stations I want. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm, I like Facebook. Look, my face in the book. That's the kind of Facebook I'm talking about. My face in the book. God is coming, friend. The Lord is coming. And when you have a society like this one way back then condemning Christ publicly, overwhelmingly, and Pilate's asking the question, why, what hath he done? Do you realize what had happened to you and I? We went downtown in Chattanooga and started preaching the gospel and started telling, do you realize what day and age we live in? I'm telling you, you're talking about condemning a message. They have condemned the message of Christ in our school. This is, what, this is why society is the way it is. When you take the message of God out of the school, says, no wonder there's murdering going on. No wonder the overdose of drugs is like it is. No wonder things are out of control and society is going down. It is downhill. It's just about hit the bottom. Why? Friend, they don't want nothing to do with God. They're condemning the message of God. They don't want to hear it. Well, you know what? I want to hear it. Tell me the story of Jesus. Write every word on my heart. Tell me the story of Jesus. It never gets old. It never ever gets old. The message of God never gets old to a Christian. And just like I was saying in Sunday school, one of the major reasons why the, the judgment of God is not on this world, the condemnation of God's not fallen, is because of the child of God's presence here. You and I are worth something like Joseph was. We're worth something. We are keeping the, the, the judgment of God off of society. But let me say, I stand with him in Pilate here. There's a message here. This public official, God's got his heart in his hand. He stands up and he says, why? What evil has he done? What has he done? What has he done that's made you so angry? What has he done that's made you so quick to, to pass judgment to take a man's life? I mean, look, did you realize this? You don't see this going on in today's society with people who are committing murder and wicked crimes. They'll slap them on the wrist, man. But here these people are blood thirsty for the death of God's son. They want him gone. Why? Because of who he is and what he stands for. Did you know this? There's coming a day that every one of us are going to answer for the time that God gave us here on this earth and the time that the Lord Jesus himself was in our presence and in our midst and how Christ ministered to us. May I tell you, we are truly in debt to the Son of God. We're indebted to Him. But this crowd hollers and publicly, publicly condemns Him. They literally cried out, crucify Him. Now, you, you have to understand the, the, the thought here. Why did they want Him crucified? What had He done so bad that they would crucify him. Why not just stone him or kill him? Why would, they, why would they want him crucified? Friend, I'm talking about, look, this is not just a dislike. This is not being upset. I mean, you take like, let's just say, for instance, a child molester, someone that's been uh, uh, 
mistreated a child, <clears throat> as far as I'm concerned, they ought to have the worst punishment you can give them. They're wanting a worse, worser punishment on the Lord himself. And he done not, he could, they couldn't, no one would answer a question. I mean, there were thousands of people and Pilate said, why, what has he done? What's he done? Why do you want me to crucify him? Why do you want me to get, what has he done? And not one person hollered out, he did this or he did that or he done nothing. You know why? God wanted it evident here at this day. The question was asked publicly. And there was no answer to what he had done wrong. Because he is the innocent, sinless lamb of God. He not only died for you and I, but I'm telling you, we serve a God who is sinless, who is perfect, and I'm telling you, he wants you and I not only to be, he wants us to be holy like he is holy. And when they look here, when they stand and they'll willfully condemn God's son, you remember the words of Jesus, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. And you say, preacher, that's not too encouraging of a message. I'm telling you right now, we're living in a day to where a Christian, if we're going to do anything for God, if we're going to stand for the Lord, if we're going to accomplish anything for God, we are going to take some persecution. We are going to go through some difficulty. There are an abundant amount of people who are just like this crowd. They want nothing to do with Christ. Now listen, there's an entertainment crowd. That'll have a lot to do with religion, but not Christ. Religion is okay. But when you get to thinking about Christ, what do you think about? Hey, friend, I don't know about you, but I think about the very one that created this world. The one that has piercing vision. The Lord can see everything. He knows everything. He's never once had a bad thought. He's never done nothing wrong. The only thing Christ had ever done, when, it, when they, he asked the question, why, what hath he done? You know all he had ever done? He had healed the blind. He had, he had healed the sick. He had raised the dead. He had walked on water. He had only done good. He went about doing good. All he had ever done was good. And yet they wanted to condemn him because they hate his holiness. They hate his righteousness. And they know one day they're going to stand before him. And we're living in a nation, friend, that will accept anything but the message that you and I believe in, what do we believe? We believe in the message of salvation, repentance and faith. We believe that salvation is by nothing and plus nothing. It's by grace. Sinners are saved by the grace of Almighty God. Through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, He shed His blood at Calvary for you and I, why did he shed his blood? Why was he punished? He was punished for my sin. And when you accept the message of Christ, you have to acknowledge your place in this world. Sin. Had somebody the other day, I was talking to an older person, and all I was doing was talking about a death of a family member. And that older individual got upset very fast, made the statement, let's talk about something positive. They didn't want to talk about death. You know why people don't want to talk about death? Because they're not prepared for it. They're not prepared for it, friend. It could happen any second. We ought to be prepared for death. Why can two Christians talk about future things and talk about death and not have a problem, but you get a lost person involved and you get to talking about death or you get to talking about sorrow and they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. They want to be like an ostrich that sticks their head in the sand and try to avoid it. Let me tell you something. There are, there's an appointment that you're not going to avoid. It is appointed unto man once to die and after this the judgment. We better settle it while we have an opportunity, while we're breathing, while we're walking, while we're alive. We better settle it and settle it now. Amen. And 
not wait. We either are going to accept him or condemn him. The world, friend, hates the things of God. But you flip the coin and think about it. The world, the very creation of God, condemns him and hates him and wants him crucified. But you flip that coin, it's all coin always has two sides. But you flip the opposite side of it, you know what it is? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He was made sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus, as the songwriter said, paid it all. Condemned. Well, last but not least, there's a process of sin that I want to talk about. Did you know this? You look here and you see in our text, look in verse 14 again. Mark chapter 15, verse 14. Then Pilate said unto them, Why, what evil hath he done? And they cried, The more exceedingly crucify him. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered, watch it, Jesus, when he had scourged him to be crucified, here's what took place. You know the story, but I want to tell you again. There's a process of sin, friend. Pilate had given the people an opportunity to save Christ, to accept Christ. And they chose Barabbas. They chose sin over the Savior is what the message is here. They chose the path of sin over the path of salvation. That's heartbreaking. But it happens every day. You've got people that will choose the way of sin every time. You're either going to choose sin or you're going to choose the Savior. There's no middle ground. And sin, friend, has a process on the Lord's life, it started, if you will, with a spitting. It started bringing a public shame to the Lord. You know what they did to him, don't you? Here's, what, here's, the, here's a picture of sin. And, and, and when you look at it, I don't believe it gets no blacker or no uglier than, than what I'm fixing to describe. They've taken the King of glory, the Lord of glory. We'll bow to him one day. We'll reverence him one day, although we do now in our hearts. They took him and they stripped him naked. I want you to think about that for a moment. We're talking about the Prince of Heaven, friend. They stripped him naked. And they mocked him. And they began to shame him publicly and spit upon him. May I say that sin brings public shame. Sin brings public shame to the life of individuals that will not go God's way. Public shame means everyone finds out. Many find out about your sin. Many find out about your life. And hear this wicked crowd. In front of this wicked crowd, Jesus was spit on. I don't know about you, but that, that blows my mind that God's son was spit on. And belittled for you and I. What love. He loved us. But you see the sin, the shame, and then the scourging. They whipped our Lord like a dog. They whipped him with a cat of nine tails and bruised his body. They brutally beat him publicly. And this is a picture of what sin does to the life of an individual. God is showing this group of people, this wicked group who needs Christ, what sin will do. When you look at Calvary and you look at the Lord Jesus and you think about him being spit on, you think about him being scourged, 
That is God sending the world a picture of what sin will do to an individual, to a man or woman, boy or girl. See, Jesus was a man. He was a God man. He was God and man. But the man Jesus visualized to the world what sin would do. What, what, what did it show us? It showed us that the very one that would raise the dead, look at the one that walked on the water, it showed us what power sin displayed on the life of God's son. Now listen. If sin did that to Christ, and we know God allowed it to take its course, that you and I might not have to go that route. Thank the Lord, I'm glad, I'm grateful that he took it from me. He took my sin that I don't have to go there. But here's the message. If sin devastated God's son and belittled him and beat him to the point of crucifying him, what will sin do to you and I if it did this to the line of the tribe of Judah? What will sin do to mankind? Spitting and shaming and scourging was bad. It was horrible. Have you ever thought about what the sin, the process of sin is doing to the lives of individuals now? I'm telling you, there are husbands and wives whose lives are falling to pieces from narcotics, from immorality, from wickedness. Sin is destroying the life of people every second of the day. May I tell you, uh, no kind of psychology, no kind of good talk, no kind of turning over a new leaf. None of these programs, they may help uh, uh, very minimal and temporarily. None of this helps sin. There's only one cure for sin. And did you know what? This crowd here didn't want it. Who'd they want? They chose the path of Barabbas. What was Barabbas a path of? Sin. They chose the path of sin. Here Jesus is. Pilate looks at it. He's a man. He's a man of authority and he's seen Barabbas' life. He's seen and heard of Jesus' life. Matter of fact, Pilate wanted to see Jesus. Here one has raised the dead. Here one has taught the Bible like none has ever taught before. Here are the miraculous things, the evidence that Jesus was God's son, the Messiah. The overwhelming evidence was in the air. And Pilate asked, why, what hath he done? You know what they said? Crucify. We don't want nothing to do with him. And I'm sad to say, we're living in a world with my relatives and your relatives and my loved ones and your loved ones and your friends and my friends. And it's sad to say many of them fall in this crowd. They want nothing to do with him. It's heartbreaking. And you know what sin did? Sin shamed our Lord to the point that he was beaten almost to death. And then sin put him on display. God allowed sin to take its course, the sin of this world, and hang him on a tree as a shame and as a curse before the world. And when you look at that picture, you don't only see the goodness and the love of Almighty God, but you see the process of sin. When you look at the brow of our Lord Jesus, the, the darling Son of God, and from his head to his feet, his precious feet, how sin had bruised and battered the Son of God. 
That's a picture of what sin will do to mankind. Sin will devastate your life. It'll ruin you. It'll bruise you. It'll batter you. Thanks be unto God we don't have to go that path. What do you mean, preacher? He took, he took it all from me. When I look at that cross and I look at the life of our Lord, I'm not going to have to suffer because of my sin that way. I'm not going to have to be publicly ashamed. Sin's not going to belittle me. Sin's not going to be, it's not going to put me on display because my Lord took the brunt of sin for me. He took it all for me. They spit on him. They scourged him. And they crucified him. And the overwhelming crowd in that day, do you know what they said? Exceedingly. Crucify him. We want nothing to do with it. Well, may I say this. I embrace him. He's my Lord and there's no other Lord who can calm the storms of life like my Lord. He took my sin, the sin of this world, and He took it from me and for this world and I openly confess and embrace Him and Christianity, the death, burial, and resurrection of God's Son. I'm on God's side. Amen? I don't care what this world has to say anymore. I'm going to stand with the Lord. I'm going to love the Lord. And I will identify myself this morning as a blood-bought child of God who reverences the cross of the Lord Jesus, who is a soldier of the cross. And I love Him today. He is my Lord, and I openly accept Him. And oh, if I could answer the question, why, what has He done? He's loved me like no other person's ever loved me in my life. He died in my stead. He shed His blood for me at Calvary and took the brunt of sin and the punishment for me. And he not only took it, but he miraculously rolled from a grave. And he ascended up to heaven in heaven's glory. And there he waits for me. And one day, I'm going to be with him. And no matter what this crowd said, and no matter what they, how they condemn God, and don't love God, and don't follow God, it's going to pay off to identify with the cross, to identify with the Lord, to stand with God. And one day, friend, the soul of the Son of God. <laughs> will touch the third heaven. He's going to step out. And we're going to hear a voice like a trumpet. And you know what it said? Come up hither. And God, just like he parted the Red Sea, just like he brought the walls of Jericho down, is going to miraculously take out Every single believing child of God in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. <laughs> Gone in a moment. <laughs> no more heartache. No more sorrow. No more dealing with the wickedness of this world. No more dealing with this condemning situation of Christianity. But identify. Now can you imagine this now? When we're up there 
Have you ever thought about what it's going to be like? Let's, let's just ponder for a moment. In the presence of Almighty God. Have you thought about it? Now, I don't know about you, but Jude says something along this line. He's hit, Jude kind of hits here where I'm aiming at. There's coming a second, a day, a time in this world. And Jude stood up and prophesied, and he said, Behold, the Lord comes with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon all the ungodly who committed all their ungodly deeds. And what he's saying is he's going to condemn those that condemn. You know what? I'm going to be with him. It doesn't seem right now like we are on too good a side. But I know better. See, you know what's kept Christianity going on so long? Of course, the Bible. But Christianity is different from any religion, Brother Mark. He's inside me. Amen. He's inside me. And this world looks dark and it looks dim sometimes. And we don't understand everything. We don't know why sometimes God allows things. Why would God allow this crowd to publicly stand and exceedingly condemn and cry, crucify him. Listen to me. It was a process of sin that God had to let and allow to run through. Now watch it and I'm done here. It's coming to an end. Think of all the bad things you can think of right now that's going on in this world. I'm telling you, it's coming to an end. There's going to be no more sin, no more sorrow. I'm telling you, God's Son is going to sit on the throne of the universe and sin is going to stop. He's going to commend it. And right then and right there, these people will be judged in God's presence. And did you know what? I'm never going to be judged. Did you know that, Brother Chuck? <laughs> One place I'm coming. I'm, you cannot bypass the Bema seat. Going to appear before the Bema seat. We're going to appear there, and here's what's going to be the answer. Why are you here, sir? God's going to open that book. He's going to open them. And for some reason, as organized as the Lord is, I, I'm going to say it's going to be in alphabetical order. And I'm going to be sitting there a little while ago. There's a long list. From A to C is a long way. God's going to hit down there on the seas, and He's got the day and the time when I got saved. Glory to God. And right over by my name, the thumbprint of the Son of God is a blood mark by my name. And I'm coming in because I've been under the blood. I've been washed by the blood. All that He's done for me. I give Him glory this morning. I love Him. He saved me. He changed my wretched life. Give me a new song and give me a new life and give me a new future and a new hope. 
My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Once I drifted out in sin, had no hope or joy within. And then I met the Lord. You love him today. Because of his condemnation, because of his public condemnation by these people. God allowed him to suffer. God allowed him to be publicly shamed. But I don't have to be. One day, he's coming. One day, I'm leaving. This takes all the anxiety and heartache out of a child of God's life. They don't have what we have, Brother John. I asked this morning, heads are bowed and eyes are closed. You go ahead and stand to your feet if you'd like, because we're going to be dismissed right after. But if you've never been saved, you're listening in on Facebook or maybe in the crowd here, in the audience, man, don't put salvation off. Don't put it off. Today is the day of salvation. If you've never been saved, the greatest thing you could ever do today is invite Christ into your heart. Would you do that? Would you do that today? Heavenly Father, we love you today. Thank you so much for your goodness to us. Thank you for the blessing of the Word of God. And as Pilate asked the question, why? Why? There's no answer to it. Because all you had ever done was good. All you'd ever done was for others. All you'd ever done pleased your Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you for loving my wretched soul. Be with us throughout the day. Bring us back this evening. I promise you for all you do, we'll love you for it in Jesus' name. God bless you. You're dismissed. Don't forget your tithe and offering on the way out. One of the men will have a plate.